Hi guys, so I'm back to one of these report videos, so I'm going to quickly try and go through all these news reports that have been building up over the last couple of days. Lindsey Graham warns Iran is testing Trump and Israel is preparing for war. So we have Senator Lindsey Graham saying Israel is testing President Donald Trump and warned Israel was preparing to start a war in southern Lebanon over an, over an, an Iranian-backed Hezbollah rocket factory. Southern Lebanon is where the next war is coming, Republican Graham told reporters on Tuesday at a press conference with Democratic Senator Chris Coons after lawmakers took a bipartisan trip last week to the Middle East. While Trump has vowed to counter Iran's influence in the Middle East, accusing its leaders of fomenting terrorism, his administration has said its military goal in war, in war ravaged Syria is limited to defeating Islamic State and preventing it from regrouping. The limits of that mission are increasingly coming into question ahead of a White House visit next week by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, with the war that's going on in Syria, ISIS has pretty much been defeated and pushed back in Syria, yet the American forces remain. Um, and Iran is suggesting that America basically wants to have a permanent presence um, in Syria, which Iran doesn't. Want. So Iran is building up bases in Syria, which Israel doesn't want. And it's just a whole chain effect of things because Israel is, as I've mentioned before, preparing to take on Iran by themselves. They passed legislation in Israel that would allow Benjamin Netanyahu to pursue an attack on Iran um, without basically most of the what I'd, what I'd say most of the uh, people involved in managing the government, they basically don't need to have a say in it. He can act almost unilaterally, which is interesting because Xi Jinping has just, um, they've just passed a law in China, which will basically allow Xi Jinping to be president forever. Um, well, for as long as he lives, which is, you know, it could be many, many years. Um, Israel is due to mark, mark their Independence Day, um, not just in Israel, but also in New York. The reason this is interesting for me is because two of the days I'm talking about, April the 3rd and April the 18th. Now, in the iPad Go video, when this scene appears, this appears to be the Star of David, the Jewish star. Um, some people, you know, think it's the cross between the, the triangle and the upside down triangle, which is a satanic uh, star. So I'm not going to get into all of that, but just from what we understand, this is... Um, a representation of the Jewish star, whether it is the one or not, um, and it's surrounding the Statue of Liberty, which is based in New York. Now, that obviously comes back to the report I just mentioned, because Israel is celebrating its Independence Day um, in New York, which appears to be a cross between the star and the Statue of Liberty. Interestingly enough, the um, Independence Day is going to occur on April the 18th, it starts in the evening of April the 18th and ends on the, e uh, the evening of uh, April the 19th. So it's right in that time frame that I'm looking at, the 18th of April, um, where I think something could happen, or the 3rd of April, where I think something could happen. As I said, I'm leaning more towards the 18th because in the iPad got video, they've hidden the number 18 and uh, kind of revealed the number 3 um, to kind of lean your thoughts towards the 3rd. Um, of any particular month, in my opinion, it's the 3rd of April, but the 18 is hidden, so the 18 and the 3 correspond to the either the 3rd of April, which is the 18th lunar day, or the 18th of April, which is the 3rd lunar day. So, you guys that follow my videos, you're aware of all the things that I've mentioned um, about this already. Um, Israel is believed to be excavating underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and when I saw this image, it automatically straight away it reminded me of the scene um that we spoke about just yesterday with the uh the boy and the rising up on the passover kind of uh, image that we've got here and uh, right next to what we are interpreting as this mosque that's been uh, blown up which could possibly be the al-aqsa mosque we then have this structure right next to it um which kind of in terms of imagery just kind of reminds me of this part here so I'm just going to quickly play this video.
Now, obviously, I find myself asking, why is Israel building tunnels underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque? Now, kind of two theories come to mind. They're either attack tunnels that can be used in the event of a war to transport goods and uh, men from one place to another, or they're escape tunnels, in which case it will suggest that above ground is um, no longer safe or no longer habitable. Um, I know that they've got an underground uh, synagogue, uh, which they recently finished um, building um, this year or early uh, late last year. So the Israel, the Israelites, the you know the Israelis, they they appear to be going underground um, in in the sense that they're building these tunnels, and we have a lot of tunnels being built in America as well. Um, and I'm pretty sure in the UK there's tunnels. In fact. Pretty much in all the countries, there's probably tunnels being built in anticipation of a nuclear war, which is not off the table. People, some people have heard, uh, seen comments that say that nuclear weapons aren't real. Um, and my rebuttal to that was, ask the Japanese if a nuclear weapon is real. Um, none of us have experienced a nuclear detonation in our lifetime, and I wouldn't want to. But it appears that's the way it's going. Um, in line with all the build-up of tension in the Middle East, American troops are here to defend Israel. So 2,500 American troops, along with more than 2,000 IDF soldiers, participate in 2018 Juniper Cobra exercise, preparing for a massive missile rocket barrage on Israel from multiple fronts. The American officers say they're here to defend Israel and its sovereignty. So clearly there is some indication that Israel may be attacked from multiple fronts if they're preparing for such an attack, um, which would mean basically all the countries of Israel, which are predominantly Muslim, would be attacking Israel. And for what reason would they, they be attacking Israel? Maybe something like um, Israel attacking the Al-Aqsa Mosque um, for, for whatever reason or something happening there that causes the situation to go off the Richter scale. Um, in terms of Israel themselves, they are scouting out Iranian military bases as the war threat rises um, with nations fated to collide, which is Israel and Iran. The bases contain tens of thousands of Iranian Revolutionary Guard troops conducting overseas operations and supplying missile and transfer facilities to Hezbollah. The Lebanon-based Shia militia, uh, militia was mentioned in a military intelligence document submitted to the Israeli government this week, according to national media. The document said, according to the Times, two powerful strategic trends are fated to collide the Iranian insistence on establishing a military presence in Syria and the Israeli insistence on preventing it. So those two are destined to clash. Um, it's, in, it's in prophecy. It just seems to be building up even more so over the last couple of months. Um, and as I mentioned Israel, they've kind of prepared themselves for a tsunami in terms of putting warning signs along the beaches. Um, they've never done that before, um, but they've decided to do that this year. They've got their military kind of digging tunnels all over the place and under Al-Aqsa Mosque. Um, American troops are there saying they're ready to defend Israel from, um, you know, missile attacks on multiple fronts. And uh, Passover is coming up for them at the end of the month on the 31st of uh, March, which is when I think, which is what I think this scene is depicting an Egyptian firstborn taken away at the same time as a first, uh, a blue moon, uh, full moon, which uh, a blue moon, full moon is occurring on the 31st, which is Passover, which uh, this is what the child appears to be representing, an Egyptian child, Egyptian firstborn taken away. Um, so all of that is something to keep our eyes on. And, um, I'm keeping a very close eye on the 31st of March leading into April, the 3rd of April, and then to the 18th of April, and on which one the video and uh, multiple sources are referencing. Now, across the water to North Korea, um, North Korea, obviously, you guys have heard the news um, recently that South Korea have said that North Korea are willing to denuclearize and enter into talks with the US um, and for Kim Jong-un to meet Donald Trump personally, which Donald Trump has agreed to, which I think is foolish because... While he's bragging and, um, you know, taking all the praise for Kim Jong-un wanting to have talks, nothing has come out of North Korea or Kim Jong-un directly. 
Um, and it seems to me that it could be a case of build up the uh, suspension um, and then tear it down by saying, no, we don't want to meet or, you know, test another rocket or doing another nuclear test because they're developing pl um, plutonium. They are still digging out their nuclear test site. They're still working on their submersible barges. So even though they've agreed to this meeting, there seems to be no indication that they actually intend to uphold what they say. So North Korea threatened on Saturday to counter the US if the United States holds joint military exercises with South Korea and said it would not beg for talks with Washington. Now, this comes as the Japanese Prime Minister is due to visit the US in April. So you've got the military exercises between the United States and Israel uh, potentially taking place in April, the Japanese Prime Minister visiting the US in April, the Jewish um, celebration of the Independence Day happening in April, um, and all kind of seeming to come around the April 18th kind of mark. So on Friday, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that he would travel to the United States in April to meet with United States President Donald J. Trump. Abe's remarks come after the unexpected announcement on Thursday evening delivered by South Korea's National Security Advisor in Washington, D.C., that U.S. President Donald Trump had accepted an invitation from North Korean leader Kim Jong-un for a summit. Such a summit would be the first of its kind between a sitting U.S. leader and his North Korean counterpart. The two countries have no diplomatic relations and have traded threats for years. So it appears to me that Japan is worried that um, these, what I'll do in air quotes, peace talks, that are being implemented will be excluding Japan, as in they won't be at the table. And the responsibility for negotiating a peace strategy would be left to Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. Um, I don't have any problems with saying they are not the two most reliable people um, for a deal to be made with, for them to be sitting on the table making deals. Um, so, April... Um, South Korea, a presidential advisor says US-South Korea drills to start in early April. So this is where we're talking about the drills that the South Koreans and the United States will be doing in April. This is obviously after the Winter and Paralympics where the military exercises were put on hold between South Korea and America, but not put on hold between Japan and the US. So South Korea and the United States will start in early April a joint military exercise postponed until after the Winter Olympics and Paralympics a South Korean presidential security advisor said, according to Yonhap news agency, Mr. Moon Chon In, speaking at a cinema, uh, seminar in Washington, said he was is aware the drills will begin in the first week of April, reported Yonhap on Wednesday, uh, February 28th. So that was um, reported a little while ago. And the drills are taking place in April, appearing to be the first week of April. Um, and then obviously that's when they start and then they carry on. So... Um, the 18th of April is in the third week of April. So we'll see if um, things carry on till the 18th of April, if something happens in the first week, which I'll be looking at in terms of the 3rd of April. Uh, give me a second. <clears throat> so uh, Korea agreed to hold third summit in April to reaffirm resolve to denuclearize. So just for a reiteration, the Jewish anniversary or the Jewish Independence Day is in April Japan uh, is going to the US in April, or the Prime Minister is going to the US in April. Um, Japan, sorry, South Korea and America plan to hold joint military drills in April, which North Korea said they would respond to in whatever way that would be. I don't know. Um, and then you've got Korea, North Korea and South Korea planning to hold their third summit in April. So South Korea and North Korea have agreed to hold a summit of their leaders late next month. South Korean President Moon Jae-in, a uh, top security advisor, said Tuesday on the outcome of his trip to the Communist North. The third inter-Korean summit will be held at the joint security area of, um, forgive me, I'm not going to say the name. So you can you can see it there. That's, that's where they're going to hold it. Pan Moon Jeom, I think. As close as I can get. So there's a lot of things going on in April um, with Israel, with... Um, Iran, with North Korea, South Korea, Japan. Um, as I said in the report earlier, even though North Korea has, oh well, South Korea has said that North Korea have said that they're going to denuclearize and come to the table for talks. Um, but at the same time, they're busy making plutonium. So 
they've remained silent um, since the South Koreans said what they said. And um, it just appears to me that it's a ploy um, to say that they're going to have peace talks means that it's unlikely that America would preemptively strike them um, while they're saying that they're going to have peace talks. It would look bad internationally. And um, if anything did kick off in terms of North Korea said they want to denuclearize and come to the peace talks, but America still attack them, that's going to look bad on the international stage. Um, and, you know, you won't have the support that you would have if, for example, North Korea were to attack first or if they were to withdraw themselves from the peace talks. Um, you know, then you could do something, but it's a it's a very smart game Kim Jong Un is playing. Um, you don't become the dictator of an entire country um, by being stupid. So, although I don't agree with Kim Jong Un and the things that he does and says, I can I can see that he's not a stupid person. So, North Korea remained silent Monday about the forthcoming summit with Donald Trump three whole days after the White House made the shock announcement that the president would personally meet with Kim Jong-un. Neither government officials nor state media in North Korea has made mention of the potentially historic sit-down uh, since Friday. Government officials in South Korea said they had heard nothing from Pyongyang either. We have not seen nor received an official response from the North Korean regime regarding the North Korea-US summit, a spokesman for South Korea's Ministry of Unification said on Monday. I feel they're approaching this matter with caution and they need time to organise their stance. That's an optimistic view. Um, what I think they need time for is to finalise their weapons programme. Um, they were running out of time and uh, they have bought themselves a little bit more by going to the Winter Olympics and involving themselves in that. And they bought themselves a little bit more by saying they're going to enter into these peace talks. But as I've said before, you do not develop missiles in a nuclear program for over 10 years to give them up just like that um he wouldn't and he's not going to so whatever this is it's not what they're telling us um and taking a trip across the asian peninsula to russia where uh the russian spy ship is still making news and making waves um it's appeared off the u.s coast again so a Russian spy ship has once again been spotted just off the coast of the United States, this time near a ballistic missile submarine base in Georgia, according to Navy officials. This particular Russian spy ship has been monitored numerous times over the last several months. In January, it cruised within 30 miles of the Virginia coast, and just a few weeks ago, the ship ventured near a U.S. submarine base in Connecticut. We are tracking the Viktor Leonov's presence off the East Coast, much like we are aware of all vessels approaching the United States. We respect the right and freedom of all nations to operate in international waters in accordance with international law. And that's fine. You can operate in international waters. For example, you can go fishing. You can trade in, in terms of, you know, taking uh, goods from one place to another. But sitting off the coast of a particular country like the United States, gathering intelligence is not something that should be taken lightly, especially where Russia has um, just uh, tested its hypersonic missile that moves five times faster than the speed of sound and um, apparently is capable of evading any missile defences. The Russian aerospace forces have conducted the first successful test firing of the air-launched Kinzhal, uh, Kinzhal or, or I'll just call it Dagoff, that's the English translation, um, a hypersonic missile according to the state-sponsored media outlets. The missile supposedly, supposedly named KH-47M2 and referred to as the Kinzahal, was fired from a modified MIG-31BM NATO reporting name Foxhound over southwest Russia. A report published on Facebook by Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin said the unique MIG-31 that fired the missile has been modernized. Rogozin did not specify what modifications or modernization meant. So... There's something I want you guys to watch, uh, so I'm just going to play it. Uh, just before I do, this is basically the video that the Russians released of them launching this uh, unstoppable, undetectable, indestructible missile.
Okay. So there's something I want to point out. The number that they use on this aircraft, 93. Now, obviously, some of you will instantly connect that to 666. Nine flip upside down three times is 666. But what I wanted to point out is the two numbers that they use in this production. So on the first plane that we're shown, we show the number 93. And at the end of the video, when the planes are returning, we're shown the number 91, if I can get on it. There we are. We're shown the number 91. Why that's significant to me <coughs> is because 91 and 93, take the two nines and you've got 18. Take the one and the three and you've got four, 18th of April. It just comes back to that again. So I'm looking at the 3rd of April, the 18th of April, the 31st of March um, in terms of things potentially uh, happening, escalating. There's references to the 17th of March, the 22nd of March and the 23rd as well. Um, the 22nd of March is interesting because it's uh, 223, um, but that could also be 22, which is 4, and then 3, which again comes to the 3rd of April. Um, so that's why I kind of mentioned the uh, 22nd of March um, and may uh, keep an eye on that date as well. But 91 and 93, being able to take the two nines and make 18 and take the one and the three and make four. 18th of April, which is one of the dates I'm looking at, and this whole video that I'm doing now is in relation to the events that are taking place across the globe, looking uh, even more so moving towards um, events kicking off either later this month or early um, next month in April. That is pretty much my whole video. So, you know, just, just for uh, basically a quick recap, um, Lindsey Graham warning Iran is testing Donald Trump and obviously there's the whole Iran nuclear deal that's uh, potentially going to be scrapped which will allow Iran just to do whatever they want. Sorry. Um, Israel's Independence Day which is on the 18th of April which uh, in that last video I just mentioned the 9 and the 1 and the 9 and the 3 combine them together and you can get the 18th of April which is Israel's Independence Day which is taking place um, in Israel and in New York, which um, appears to be one of the scenes that's depicted in this video where we have the Statue of Liberty and the Star of David um, in the same kind of scene, which suggests some sort of combination of um, Israel and America. Um, that could be in relation to the Independence Day, which is taking place on the 18th of April, or it could be in relation to the uh, military drills that they've currently got going on there with uh, American troops saying they're here to defend Israel from multiple rocket rocket attacks from uh, different uh, like different vantage points, basically. Um, Israel tunnels underneath Al-Aqsa Mosque, and Al-Aqsa appears to be um, what I'm interpreting as the mosque in the iPad Goat video, where we see the, the boy ascending, which looks like it's right. It's a Passover, which is on the 31st of March. Um, and then going into North Korea and the things that are going on there with the suggested peace talks, but nothing coming out of North Korea personally and all these meetings that are going on in April with South Korea and uh, Japan's prime minister going to America and South Korea and America having their joint military exercises. Um, everything is going on at the moment. So the time is getting incredibly short if um, things are due to kick off later on this month or early April, we haven't really got that much time. Today is the 13th of March. So uh, 17th is on Saturday, and that is when the first of Nissan starts, um, which is the first month of the Jewish calendar, although it's not Rosh Hashanah, which they're celebrating on September the 9th through to September the 11th. More references to 9-11 there. Um, Everything is just kind of piecing together. I've left these reports for a couple of days. I haven't pieced them together for about five days. And I find it kind of interesting that um, even though some of these news reports are uh, several days old, um, when you put them together, they flow into a pattern of activity in Israel, Iran, South Korea, Japan, um, China. Obviously, I didn't bring up any reports about China, but everyone's pretty much aware by now that Xi Jinping is looking to become president for life in China and everything else that's going on so 
as always, I'll be keeping my eyes on it and reporting as uh, as necessary. Um, but yeah, keep an eye keep an eye out for you know the next the next next couple of weeks. We really don't have that much time uh, left. You know, things could occur within the next month, which will lead us to the 13th of April, or just slightly over a month, which will incorporate the 18th of April as well. Um, some of you guys may not agree with the dates that I'm looking at, but um, you kind of have to agree that even if you don't, you, know, well, you kind of have to understand that even if you don't agree with the dates that I'm looking at, there is justification for them because all the things I've pointed out in connection with those dates, whether something happens on them or not, is out of my control. All I can do is watch, observe, interpret, convey the message across and wait and if nothing happens i'm more happy than anyone i don't mind being wrong because being wrong means people live um and that these events that we're talking about in terms of nuclear war giant tsunamis massive earthquakes um, and all sorts of other things haven't happened doesn't mean they're not going to happen but it just means that we've got more time to get the word out and to try and alert people to the world that they're living in because unfortunately people are still walking around with their eyes closed they think that life concerns a job, um, you know, trying to s settle down and, you know, all these other little things that we put importance on when the real battle is for our souls and for our minds. Um, but, you know, because we're physical beings, we just kind of give into the flesh and live the life that the flesh wants when really we should be thinking more spiritually and what comes after this life because... I believe there's an eternal life, but if you don't believe that there's an eternal life, then what comes after death is just nothing. Um, and I refuse to believe that there's nothing after death. And if um, there is something which is going to be eternal, I'd rather be eternally in heaven than eternally burning in hell. So you guys, that's the end of my video. You have a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and God bless.